The Supreme Court has issued its final decisions before heading into its summer recess. The court ruled in favor of Arizona's GOP lead voting rights case. The decision was a 6-3 to three split along party lines. Jan Crawford has the latest. It was seen as an important test for new restrictions on voting. Arizona provisions on the books for years that kick out votes cast in the wrong precinct and ban so-called ballot harvesting, where third parties other than family collect and turn in absentee ballots. Neither provision, the court said in a 6-3 vote along ideological lines, violated the Voting Rights Act because they were not enacted with a racially discriminatory purpose and states have a legitimate interest in preventing fraud. That's something Arizona Attorney General Mark Bronovich argued. We want to make sure that everyone has the ability and the right to exercise the franchise, but we also want to make sure that everyone has uh, confidence in the process and they respect the results. And that's what these laws are designed to do. But liberal justices said the decision undermines the Voting Rights Act because laws like Arizona's can be a barrier to minority voting. In a statement, President Biden said he was deeply disappointed in the decision and called on Congress to pass new legislation. At the same time, his Justice Department is suing one state, Georgia, saying its new voting law intentionally discriminates against black voters. The decision today may make that lawsuit more difficult. And as states pass more restrictive voting laws, the message from the justices is clear. This is another sign from the Supreme Court that these are going to be quintessential political judgments left to the political branches of the states. And it's going to be increasingly difficult to challenge them in court. Now, on this last day of the Supreme Court's term, no word from Justice Stephen Breyer, who, of course, is being urged by progressives to step down so that President Biden can nominate a replacement. But he's in great health. He's super active outside the court, and he really plays an important role here on this court. So at this point, a retirement from Justice Breyer this year would be a surprise. Lana? All right, Jan, thank you. For more on all this, I want to bring in CBS News legal contributor Jessica Levinson. She is also a professor at Loyola Law School. Jessica, always great to see you. So in terms of the ruling on Arizona voting laws, how might this impact other states' voting legislation? Uh, potentially very significantly. So we know that there have been new voting restrictions passed throughout the country, and we know that even more bills are currently pending. And I think this decision signals to a lot of state legislatures, if you want to pass your new voting law that might have been challenged as too restrictive under the Voting Rights Act, now is your moment because the Supreme Court has essentially said it's very, very difficult to prove that there's been a violation of the Voting Rights Act. I think that's the biggest takeaway from today, which is it's a really hard hill to climb to show that minorities have been burdened enough such that it is improper under the court's current reading of Section 2 of the Voting Rights Act. And Jessica, I also want to ask you about the Supreme Court's ruling on a case from California on Thursday striking down the state's requirement that nonprofits disclose their largest donors. What impact does this ruling have and why was California requesting that information? So uh, this is another one where we could see a big impact in states throughout the nation. So I'll start with the last question first. Why did California want this information? This was information that was reported to the IRS, information about major donors to nonprofits, to charities. California Attorney General said, we'd like this information because we oversee nonprofits in this state. We want to make sure that people aren't abusing the corporate form, that these nonprofits aren't engaging in fraud. And the Supreme Supreme Court today said, is that really your reason? It just seems like what you want is administrative ease because you can ask federal agencies for this information. Now, that's all kind of interesting, and we see the Supreme Court be very suspicious of California, but I think the bigger news out of this case is that the court announced that it's going to be difficult for states to withstand disclosure laws. The court announced basically a higher level of review that we're now gonna use when we're evaluating whether or not disclosure provisions are proper under the First Amendment. If we think back to Citizens United in 2010, part of the promise of that decision, uh, Justice Kennedy, the majority said, 
yeah, there's going to be a lot more money flowing in our system, but don't worry about right. it because we have disclosure provisions and those will be upheld. And so, you know, as you know, what is the purpose of disclosure? To provide the public with information, to deter corruption and the appearance of corruption. But the court's announcement today of this exacting scrutiny standard, I think potentially calls into question some disclosure uh, requirements throughout the nation and maybe even contribution limits. If we're really going to demand more of the government when it comes to these alleged infringements on the First Amendment, that could really change money in politics going forward. Jessica Levinson, I always so appreciate your insight. Thank you. Thank you.